Hello everyone. First of all, hello everyone. Hello. <laughs> I'll try my best not to bore you uh, with my insights. I know uh, people are feeling sleepy after the lunch. So I'll try my best. <laughs> my session is a resilient approach to the project management. Uh, adapting to the unexpected challenges because while working as a leadership role, uh, like we are facing very unexpected challenges, we we have never planned for those things. So in this session, like I talk about those un unplanned things. I'm a senior project manager at Excellent, and uh, I love cricket. And uh, uh, my passion is writing the blogs. You can find the so many blogs on the the Excellent website as well as on my LinkedIn profile as well. Uh, I have 12 plus of experience in the various roles. Initially I started with the quality assurance, then moved to the school master, as well as now I'm working as a project manager. My working style is a bit different. Um, I believe in the very open and uh, transparent communication with my uh, peers, as well as the client, which helped me to drive the business objectives and deliver this project in a very successful way. Hello. Here is the list of my uh, contributions so far. Um, I have never missed a chance to contribute in the Drupal community. It's my 10th contribution in the Drupal campaign. So, in the agenda, I'll cover the understanding, resilience, and its importance in the project management, how to develop the resilient mindset, the importance of resilient project team. It is completely different from the first point because in the first point we will talk about the uh, resilient in the resilience in the project management, and in the third point we will talk about the resilient project team. The next is the preparing for the contingencies and managing risks, adapting to change. It's completely similar uh, to the the key notes which the Sanskar has already given uh, in the morning. Next is the establishing a culture of learning from the setbacks and the failures. The last but not the least, which is ensuring resilience throughout the project life cycle. And then after I'll wrap up with the key takeaways. Let's start with the understanding of resilience and its importance in the project management. I'll start with the resilience in the project management, which Cops and with the challenges, unforeseen circumstances. So please make sure, like maintaining the positive as well as a proactive mindset, which definitely requires a resilient mindset, and it will help you out to overcome the challenges. So managing resilience, uncertainty and changes uh, which will help the team in order to get rid of uh, those or how to help them to avoid those kind of situations in the future when, when it arises. What is the importance of resilience in the project management? It will help you or it will add the ability to deliver the project in a successful way uh, despite having the unforeseen challenges and the uh, kind of the risk as well. Let's talk about uh, some important key areas where we need to focus more. Why project management, uh, resilient project management is crucial. I'll start with the navigating uncertainties. Start with the resilient and navigating the uncertainties and resilient uh, this mitigation. Uh, so, at least the project team must be resilient in order to handle all the unforeseen challenges or the circumstances. A resilience will enable the team members to tackle those things which are kind of not planned so far. Uh, kind of, let's suppose if the team members have already planned uh, the proper estimations and in the during the middle of the project and uh, the team receives the new changes from the client side, it's kind of unplanned changes. So how to 
uh, tackle those things, how to adapt those kind of changes. Resilience will help the team members, and if they can plan the risk in advance, that will help them to mitigate uh, easily. Next is adapting to the changes. Resilience will enable uh, the team members to tackle or manage all the changes uh, in the project. In most of the projects, uh, the changes are most probably in models because it, it doesn't matter like the initial you started with the 10 sprints, you plan the 10 sprints and in the middle of the phase like stakeholders feel that there is a one more sprint is required because of the requirement change. So change happens, you have to adapt it in a very serious way, so that is the important factor. Next is the project continuity. Resilience minimizes the downtime as well as the delays in the project which help the team members to go into the right way. Next is the resource optimization. The time and efforts can be saved through the resilience. I can give you an example. Let's suppose uh, that you want to add new team members. Uh, you, first of all, you can do one thing. You can uh, set the strategy to vet that person, not to judge the skills in order to set, in order to check it out whether this person is a right fit for your project needs or not. So that will help you to do the resource optimization. Next is the stakeholder confidence. Uh, the team which, which is completely resilient, uh, definitely the stakeholders uh, have the big trust on them. Uh, with the help of the trust, at least they know that uh, if the complex situation comes in to the project, then definitely this resilient team will be able to manage this situation in a very effective way. Next is the successful outcomes. If you are uh, mitigating the risk in advance, and overcoming the challenges with the, with the resilience, then definitely you will get the successful outcomes in the project. The last but not the least, which is a adaptive leadership. Project manager who manages the project resiliently makes time for decisions and steer the, uh, the project towards the success. Let's suppose uh, if project manager is uh, very resilient and uh, there are some complex situations comes in or the escalations comes in from the client side. So if the project manager is very cool or chill about the, uh, dealing the situations in a very resilient way, then definitely uh, he is the cool, then definitely the team will not face the heat and will uh, understand the situation in a very effective way and definitely figure out the solutions in a very resilient way as well. Moving ahead, the next one is how to develop the resilient mindset. There are the key strategies to develop the resilient mindset. The first is acceptance of change. Embrace change. This says like change happens. That's the one thing which we need to accept, first of all. So if the team who is resilient uh, will understand that like we have to embrace the change, then definitely we will uh, earn the growth opportunities. I can give you one more change, uh, one more example. We are let suppose you uh, you are in the last stage of the project, and uh, you know that like after a month your project will be wrapped up. Okay, so do not treat the close as a close of the opportunity or the project. Just treat them as a new opportunities. There could be a new one person chance, like you can grab the new opportunity of uh, phase two, or you can grab the new opportunity of the support and maintenance as well. Next is positive outlook. Focus on the solutions rather than the problems. If the, your leader, the project manager is very busy, definitely he will figure out the solution instead of the problem. Like I know the problem situation is there, definitely he will figure out the solution. How to get rid of that? Uh, in order to tackle the problems, there is already an expected process is there. So at the moment, he will focus on uh, the solutioning and then after later on, once the solution is done, implement it and execute it, then after that person will focus more on the uh, the, uh, the RC point of view where we can figure it out in the retrospective project. Learn from the setbacks. The setbacks are the learning experiences. People are sometimes in resistance in, in order to follow that. Because if setbacks are there, in every project the setbacks will come up. If you learn from that setbacks and improve or implement your learnings 
into your future projects that will help you to move forward in the budget related way. Next thing is the builder support network. That is a very crucial point because if you are giving the freedom to your team members to uh, take a risk and go with the innovation or uh, go in a very deep way, definitely they would require a support network. We have to feel that, like, let's suppose if they are getting a failure, then they definitely there is a support network is available that will help them in order to get rid of that kind of situation. The next is the last but not the least in this slide, which is to set the realistic goals. I know the goals are all set for sometimes for the long term goals and the short term goals. Make sure whether or not you are talking about the long term goals, split down into the short term so that at least split down into the, the minimal uh, achievable goals that will help you out to move forward in the, in the right direction. Now let's talk about the techniques for managing stress and maintaining the mental well-being. The first most important is the time management. Uh, the effective time management will help you out to prioritize the task, delegation the things and uh, it will also give you some type of the relaxation and the, the new learning opportunities. If your time is not managed properly, then you would face a lot of challenges like kind of the burnout issues, you are feeling overwhelmed, like multiple projects you are working, then definitely a lot of challenges will come up if you are not following, following the effective time management techniques. Next is uh, the good one I would say, uh, while working in the remote culture and the person, uh, you have to make sure at least the mental well-being uh, is there exercise regular and eat the balanced diet. Next is the mindfulness and the maxation. Uh, reduce stress and increase the focus and focus on more, more on the, the, the develop the emotional intelligence will be achieved with the help of the mindfulness and meditation. The next, in the first slide like we talked about the resilience in the project management. Now we are talking about the importance of resilient projecting. It is resilient uh, projecting is crucial because in order to achieve the success of the project despite having the unforeseen challenges or kind of the, the point of risk which can be mitigated in, in the later stage as well but it is required uh, for the resilient projecting. Resilience refers to the team ability where the team will bounce back from the setbacks and learnings will track all the things in the documentations or the case studies and then have to implement the same thing into the, uh, the future projects. Here are the key advantages of building a resilient project team. The first is adaptability. It often encounters, project team mostly often encounters some challenges, it could be the changing in the environment or changing in the requirement or many other things. So sometimes the project would go out of track as well. So if you want to maintain the adaptability with the, with the, within the team, then that will help them to maintain the project and uh, follow the right set of deliveries uh, with the help of resilience. Next is productivity. It, it will maintain the productivity uh, like if the team members are not feeling the stress or pressure then definitely the productivity volume would be high and team members uh, would feel more comfortable because they are not feeling anxious in the projects in the different situations the next is innovation innovation comes when project team members are free, uh, freely working in the project without any uh, taking care of that like they are taking the risk so if they are, uh, after taking the risk, they are failing in the project, then that doesn't get up because if they are bouncing back, then definitely that will convert into the opportunities or the innovations. The last but not the least, which is the collaboration. Uh, the team members can rely on each other in order to collaborate well, in order to uh, uh, go towards the resilient project team that will help to uh, get the success of the deliveries of the project. The next is strategies for creating a supportive and collaborative team environment. Clear rule and communication 
make sure uh, the clear rules are all set, the boundaries are all set for the team balance in terms of rules. And uh, if there is an uh, open communication, the transparent communication is cultivated, that will help to create a safe environment so team members will openly discuss the challenges with you directly. Next is the positive team culture. Uh, encourage teamwork, empathy, mutual respect and uh, building the constructive feedback. If this kind of environment is cultivated in your organization, the feedback giving and receiving process in a very respectful way or in a very effective way, that will help to move forward in the right direction. Another one is effective listening and conflict resolution. It reduces, uh, effective listening will reduce the miscommunication in many key areas. It will enhance the understanding and avoid the any negative impacts on the project or the team work. Last but not the least in this slide, which is the recognition and empowerment. My uh, performance coach told me one thing: if you want to criti criticize someone, then do in the private mode. If you want to recognize someone, then do in the public mode. So if if you want to maintain the resilience in your team or in the, in the organization, make sure uh, encourage the team members uh, with the recognition and empower them to do something new. And if they are failing somewhere, do not discourage them. Try to motivate them to do something different so that they can learn from the mistakes. The next is preparing for contingencies and managing risks. What is the importance of proactive risk management? The one thing which the, the organization which follow the approach to uh, figure it out the risk in advance, which will definitely create the uh, like uh, mitigation strategies in advance as well, which will avoid or help them or enable them to uh, get rid of unforeseen challenges or the circumstances in the project. Uh, it is more likely the project to succeed if the risks are addressed proactively rather than the reactively. The next is why proactive risk management is essential. The first is anticipating and mitigating the risk. Identifying the potential risk uh, early allows you to allows the organization to mitigate and eliminate them uh, in a very proactive state. Let's suppose. In during the initial phase, uh, there is a discovery happened, and after initial couple of spreads happened as well. And then after there is a one dis, uh, decision uh, was made which is not kind of effective or impactful. Uh, if you are raising the risk in advance, uh, engaging with the stakeholders, that will help you to uh, get the alignment from the stakeholders, and it is the kind of the one of the mitigation strategy in order to get rid of the risk. The next is enhancing the decision making. Uh, the potential, the considering the potential risk and their impact on the project objectives enables the proactive risk management by addressing the risk. The project manager can make the well informed decisions as well. The last but not the least, the stakeholder confidence. If you are raising the risk in advance and sharing the risk with the stakeholders, which will help them to get the alignment and agreement if let's suppose if you are raising the risk in the first sprint like uh, we don't have any uh, the backlog or the design for the sprint 3 at least client is already aware about that so that client will take care of those things those kind of risks in the sprint second at least you would get the of data uh, kind of the backlog grooming or backlog or the designs in the sprint 3 in advance that is the kind of uh, kind of gaining the confidence by engaging the customer uh, by proactively raising the risk. Let's figure out the techniques for identifying and accessing the project risk. The first one is the SWOT analysis where the strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, this kind of the technique which can use. Risk to destroy. If you are checking the risk, make sure to use any kind of tool other risk register where you can track all the, the risk in the project. Risk, make sure whatever the risk we are logging into the specific, specific tool, make sure to log uh, the assessment metrics as well, kind of the likelihood or the impact, what is the impact, so make sure to log properly over there as well. 
The next phase is the brainstorming. The risk is logged. Yeah. The impact is already logged as well. Now it's the time to do the brainstorming uh, with the technical architects or the senior team members. Once the brainstorming is done, then after we will be able to share the same thing with the client. The next area is adapting to the change in the project management. The number of factors contribute to the, the change in the project management, including the evolving technologies, which in the morning uh, we discussed that uh, chat GPT involves because it's a new technology. But it's kind of we supposed to adapt it because change always happens. Okay? The next area is uh, the successful outcome requires the ability to adapt when the project don't go according to the plan. Some strategies for embracing and managing change effectively. The first is embrace a change friendly culture. If you are cultivating open culture, uh, innovation is there in, within the team, then definitely. Uh, the friendly culture will be maintained where team will share the things in a very transparent, very open way. Engage stakeholders, which we have already discussed in the last, where if whatever the things, whatever the changes are there, try to engage with the customers, stakeholders, so that they can uh, deprioritize the things in case if there is something new they would like to involve in the project. So let's suppose there are 10 items we have already planned so far and client would like to involve 11th item as well. So try to check with the client by like, as for the priority, what is the priority of that and is it, is it feasible if you can deprioritize the other thing. In case if the 11th item is also mandatory, then if you can do one thing, you can add another source optimization. So based on that you can deliver the things as per the plan. But at least the, the open communication is required with the stakeholders as well. The last but not the least, the anticipate the changes, identify the potential source of change and incorporate uh, flexibility into the project planning as a result. The project team is preferred to respond quickly and effectively to the changes. So make sure uh, that whatever the change is there, try to anticipate that which will help you to adapt the things in a very quick way. The next area is importance of flexibility and agility in the project planning and execution. Here we are talking about the agility, so there are a the couple of things which would be very long. One is integrate the contingency strategy, where the contingency means like the things might occur in future. So if how you can avoid those kind of scenarios or unforeseen situations and how you can prevent those things in future as well. Second is uh, the agile project management. As you know that agile is pretty flexible. Right, so uh, flexible framework. So you can uh, embrace. Uh, you, you can start using the agile methodology in order to adapt the changes in a very frequent way. And uh, agile also promote uh, the proper life cycle, which will help you to gain the momentum in, within the project. The last but not the least, which is scalability, adapt the project plan on the changing requirement, resource availability, and the marketing conditions. It will help you to scale the things on that. Establishing a culture of learning from setbacks and failures. How you can establish that? Make sure the continuous improvement, build the project resilience. It's essential to embrace the setbacks and failures as learnings. So, not as a kind of learnings, but at least try to track those things in the form of documentation or the kind of activity so that team. Uh, can start implementing those learnings into the new projects. <coughs> so, the, what's the importance of embracing setbacks and failures as a learning opportunities? One is encouraging innovation and building resilience. If you can start encouraging your employees to do the innovation or taking the risk and don't worry about the failures, definitely it will help you to build the momentum in terms of resilience. Maximizing the potential through learnings from failures. Learn from failures to identify the areas of improvement and analyze the performance and optimize the future uh, projects within the knowledge, with this knowledge. Try to follow the iterative approach in terms of agile methodology. 
agile uh, we have already discussed in the last slide where iterative project management approach can be followed in order to embrace the setbacks and uh, the learning uh, and the failures from the learnings failures as learnings the last is a learning from the feedbacks and the knowledge sharing if you are cultivating the feedback process and make sure the knowledge sharing process is there. let's suppose if you are doing something new and uh, please encourage your team members in order to share the knowledge with the peers so that they can also learn something new and to go for the long term here we are going to discuss about the techniques for conducting the post mortem analysis and extracting the valuable lessons how we can do that let's suppose there is a situation where uh, some failure happened or occur in your project how you can make sure the things can track in a proper way one thing have a open honest reflection try to ask the team member try to have the uh, uh, conversation with the team members to share the honest feedback or honest reviews what has originally happened whether it's their mistakes whether it has been happened by someone else but try to encourage them to share the honest reviews so that we can track the things properly root cause analysis we call it as a rca analysis we prepare proper documentation where we track all the things what was the root cause and how we can get rid of this kind of situation here there is the documentation documenting lesson lesson learned whatever the things whatever the learnings are there from the setbacks make sure to document it somewhere and then after share the things with the client as well so that client would also understand the things like what has which actually happened so once you start having the, this kind of conversation with the client it will help to gain the trust from the client side as well because you are very open and transparent with the clients while sharing the risk because it also requires a courage to share this kind of thing with the clients here is my last topic which is ensuring resilience through the project life cycle <clears throat> for successful project completion resilience throughout the project uh, life cycle is essential it really works in throughout all the cycles in the next slide i will share what are those cycles where how resilience works resilient projects can deal with the challenges recover from the setbacks adapt to the changing conditions these are the five project management life cycles so you can call it as a project cycles one is the initiation second is planning third is execution for there is monitoring and control the last stage is closing in the phase one there is a unique challenge where a lack of clarity is there um, uncertain goals are there the stakeholder resistance can occur at the project institution it is the just a start of the project where the grooming is done or the discovery is done as well so what would be the the strategy for in order for the resilience one is identify the potential challenges early with the feasibility studies and the risk assessment so that you can raise uh, in the advance the next one which is the planning phase the situation is what the challenge is a realistic schedule is set resources are estimated but complex decisions is made complex decisions is made may means in in future it would make some sort of impact on the project or the time the strategy of for the resilience in this phase is adapt your planning as your new information emerges whatever the new changes you see from the client or the new requirement try to emerge it if there is any potential risk try to raise it at once third is execution unique challenge is execution involves managing resources may maintaining the team motivation and dealing with unexpected disruptions here's a strategy for the, the resilience establish a effective communication channel for the swift uh, response to the challenges and power the team members to make the decisions and adapt to unexpected situations the next is monitoring and control uh, where the unique challenge is keeping an eye on the progress and deviation is essential where you can establish 
the key performance indicators in order to track the things, uh, monitoring the things on the, the timely basis. It will help you to, um, to avoid the unforeseen events or uh, it will be kind of the risk assessment is required. This is the last phase of uh, which is project life cycle which is closing. The final step is the closing of project is to acceptance the deliverables. We are not talking about the UAT uh, completed by the client. It's inclusive of uh, the con contact completion or the uh, timely payments as well, the invoicing releases as well. So this is the whole process of the acceptance of the deliverables. Here's the strategy. Learning from the experience to apply them into the future ones. Whatever the learnings are there. So let's suppose you uh, got a setback in the previous project in the single situation, in the closer phase. Try to implement in the new phase so that you can mitigate the things in advance. In the last slide, I would like to sum up. Close is not just a close, it's the start of the new era and the long term success. Because once you close a project, it doesn't mean like you lost the opportunity or the opportunity is finished. It's a kind of the, uh, the gain of the new opportunity or the new phase. Or uh, I would say the support and contact, maintenance contact would be renewed as well. So it's a kind of the start of the new year. So here are the key takeaways uh, which I would like to sum up. One is the importance of resilience in project management. Uh, we discussed about the strategies to foster the resilient mindset. A role of mindfulness and positive thinking in fostering resilience, strategies of creating a collaborative and supportive environment, key reason why risk management is required, strategies for developing the contingency plans, strategies for embracing and managing change effectively, navigating the uncertainty and making the informed decisions, the importance of embracing setbacks and failures as in learning opportunities. Last but not the least, which is Ensuring the resilience throughout the project life Thank you. We have the questions and can you be the same one for the two different verticals? There's something that a product vertical and it's a service vertical, right? Yeah. So we have both the different type of market segments. So if you are working on some product based company, mm -hmm. and if you are working on some service based company, then the same model will be applied or will it be applied? Absolutely, because I don't think so the strategy would be changed. Because if you are working in the project management or the product management, the, the same strategies, same agile methodologies will be executed. The only difference is that in the product management, either you can use a Kanban, in the in the project management you can use the, the Scrum technology or methodology. So that is the only difference, but the um, overall, the whatever the things which we are implementing in the project, the same thing can be implemented in the, uh, the product management as well. Any other question? Uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot.